We're on the road again. I'm Carol, and our staff has been still going through a lot of your comments as well as your trip suggestions. They've been putting the trip suggestions in the treasure chest, and we're going to pull one out randomly. Here we go. Drum roll. Come on, Kathy. Drum roll. Well, thank you, Kathy. Okay. Da 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 da. Oh boy. Oh. There's one in the corner. Ow, yeah, well, the one in the corner. This is from Susan in Sacramento, California. And she was asking about distilleries. Now, that's not normally where we go visit, but distilleries, I don't know how they make this stuff. I just drink it. So we're going to go visit the Desert Diamond Distillery in Kingman, Arizona. This is going to be fun. I'm going to learn something about the distillery business, too. We're on the road again! I'm glad you came with us today on the road again. We are in Kingman, Arizona. We are visiting the Desert Diamond Distillery with John and Deborah Pat, and they are the proprietors of this distillery. And John's going to tell you a little bit about how he got into this business. Insanity. Ah, that counts 10 points, yes. I guess passion. And then my wife caught the disease. Ah. But you know, we, it's kind of in our blood. We've, uh, she's got a little history on her side, I got a little history on my side. Um, and you know, we started a winery back in North Carolina. Uh -huh. Things didn't, you know, pan out there, but we always had this desire to manufacture a libation. And uh, when we were, we've been out here 20 years. We did a workshop on distilling, and uh, both fell in love with it. So here we are. We always say we've been doing it 10 years now, and we haven't learned a thing. We're still doing it. <laughs> Very good. Well, we're, you're going to serve up some flights to me. A yes. flight. Yes. So what's you know, our first I, one? I specialize in rum, yes. and today I'm gonna, we're going to focus on uh, rum tasting. Mm -hmm. And I actually redistill the rum and create a vodka. Ooh! So that'll be our second spirit. But it all starts with the white rum. It is uh, it's a nice little spirit. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know you just want to sip on it. You don't need to. Can't the, do that. Uh, no, no, can't do that. Okay. Just like a good glass of wine, let's sit and enjoy it. Okay. And then you can have a little water afterwards to wash right. her down. All right. And. Uh, you should get a little bit of vanilla. Some people get a little licorice. And of course, we're just going to build from this. Oh, good. And I do everything but grow the cane, so <laughs> there's no one else to blame. Good, bad, or ugly, as Clint would say, it's me. Um, uh, I don't try to copy anybody else's spirits. I try to create my own flavor profile. Mm -hmm. And as you work your way through here, you'll see I, I think I've done an okay job. Yeah, I, I bet you have. Very good. And then I pour this in here? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to move on to the vodka. Okay. And as I said earlier, we redistill the, sh the rum mm -hmm. to 190 proof, which is by law a vodka in the States. And I don't carbon filter it. Mm. So it still ends up with characteristics of the molasses. Ooh. So it drinks more like a Brazilian cachaça than any traditional vodka. I always use these you know, analogies. You don't ask a craft brewer to uh, create a mainstream beer. Right. That kind of defeats the purpose. Right. Well, as a craft distiller, I didn't want to create a traditional vodka. you got thousands of choices there. So we've come up with something a little bit unique. Right. And as I understand it, you are the oldest craft distillery in Arizona. Yep. My attrition, the oldest didn't make it, so we inherited the title. I always say it's not a badge of honor. It's more to show you how young the industry and um, how difficult it's been. So yes, yes. Oh, in the, the future. That's, that's why you just sip. Yeah. <laughs> it does have a bit. Yeah. I like that, though. So I do everything but grow the cane. And like I say, we've been doing it for 10 years. And, uh, you know, I can't be farm to table. It's pretty tough to grow sugar cane in, mm. in Arizona. Mm -hmm. um, so I source that out of Louisiana. But after that, we ferment, distill, and age every lick of spirit in here. Wow. Uh, and it's a beautiful environment, too. I mean, well, you walk so in and you feel so comfortable. It's kind of created a little oasis in the desert yeah. or in the park. Yeah. It's not like a bar or, or just where you're we selling something. We get a lot something. of customers who walk 
you know, they're driving into the industrial park going, yeah. really, this is yeah. where we are yeah. supposed to be? Yeah, yeah. And then they open the door and it's like, hello. Yeah, so. it's just a very comfortable environment. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So we do a barrel-aged rum. We do several barrel-aged rums. Mm -hmm. And the oldest spirit I have currently is over nine years old. We're just anxiously waiting that 10-year mark in January. But I also do an expedited aging. And if you look around the shop, you'll see wood chips in a bag. I sell those to barbecuers. Ah. But I use them like a tea bag. Oh, very and it good. creates this very upfront uh, bourbon-y like rum. I this is usually where I tell you I'm the miner, not the pirate. That expedited I, aging kind of sounds like me, you know. Well. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't touch that. Well, <laughs> don't here, touch things it. get better with age. So. Yeah, yeah, mellow, mellow. That's right. Yeah. So this takes me about three months, and it's a very right up front, very bourbony, finishes like a rum. I like that. That's so, very good know, too. So you I make spirit for you wow. to drink straight up. That's my job. But this is also our go-to for all your traditional cocktails. Mm -hmm. Cooper Libras, Mai Tais, Mojitos, Dark and Stormies. Mm -hmm. This is our go-to. It's good. Very good. And of course, when you're here under normal conditions, you can enjoy a cocktail and appetizers. And yeah. Good. Good, good. So you serve some appetizers. Yes. And I will take a picture of the patio area. Mm -hmm. Again, very inviting, very friendly, very comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Looks I appreciate that. Let's say I don't drive because I'm too old. How, well, how do people get out here? A lot of groups. Uh, there. I, I know out of Laughlin, for sure, we have a small tour company, Laughlin Tours, that uh, hauls about five to ten people out. But we have tour companies... Or, you know, we have some of the uh, uh, over 55 communities that uh, rent their own buses. The short buses, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they uh, group group of people come out and spend two or three hours and wow. enjoy an appetizer or a sandwich and a cocktail or tasting mm -hmm. or a tour. Mm -hmm. We do the tours, although those we're going to start doing, uh, you ha we, we're going to be scheduling those from now on. So. That's a good idea. Yeah, we're getting too busy. Yeah. And I've got to say, it's it's comfortable in here. It's not really hot. It's not really cold. It's just the right well, temperature. Well, you always like outside. You we have such a nice ambiance outside. Yes. But in Kingman, you are going to enjoy. You're normally going to enjoy a little breeze. Mm-hmm. So, mm -hmm. bring your hat. Bring my hat. Yes. All right. So this tasting, we're going to enjoy a three. It's about a three and a half year single barrel rum. And I did change glasses on you because you're going to get more of a bouquet here. Mm -hmm. Okay. We age in new barrels. We are the only, well, last year, up to last year, we were the only craft distiller in the country who aged rum in new barrels. Mm. And uh, between that, the microclimate of Kingman, which is a lot like Tennessee, Kentucky, mm -hmm. in a sense. It's a hot summer. It's a cool winter. Yeah. We're bone dry. Yes. But I have to create the humidity. Uh -huh. Otherwise, the angels take it all. Yes. <laughs> and, <laughs> the angels uh, take it all. Very happy angels. The angels being the evaporation. Yes, yes. <laughs> So, you know, we always say they're getting drunk and we're going broke. Right, right. But uh, we, we, ate, we have a barrel room where we humidify the barrel room. Uh, the new barrels, the microclimate, all of these contribute to a very whiskey-like character to mm. our rums. Mm -hmm. And this three and a half year is no different. It has a soft beginning, a uh, little, very robust, peppery, a uh, little smoke, almost an Irish whiskey-like character mm. on the finish. Mm. You're going to get a little cinnamon in that, too. Mm. And all of this comes out of the wood aging. We do not add anything to this. Mm. It sits in a barrel for three and a half years mm -hmm. in this particular case, and this is what you... And using the new barrels gives you a better taste to it? Uh, it gives it a different taste. Ah. Yes. And the barrels are made out of? Uh, they're a hybrid barrel, French and American oak. And, Salute. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's very, very good. Good, 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 good. I hate, hate to empty the glass, but I'm going to be off this stool pretty soon. If right. I <laughs> there you go. I always say, I got a dolly in the back. I'll strap you to it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like Silence of the That's Lambs. <laughs> so, not to be forgotten here, this is the, what we, most people are going to call our signature rum. Mm. We didn't, we do one flavored rum. We wanted to do something that, you know, people walk in here, where's your coconut rum, where's your spiced rum? Mm -hmm. I don't really follow any traditional Caribbean recipes. Mm -hmm. We make rum in Arizona. <laughs> we wanted to do something that really said Southwest. Mm -hmm. 
and we think we've done a pretty good job, or at least the customers do. Oh, we yeah. sell a lot of agave flavored rum. Yes. And I take the dark rum, agave nectar, a few other natural flavors, and we've come up with this. It drinks a lot like a honey whiskey. Because we are not only serving America with our videos, and I don't, somebody in another country may not know what agave is. Could you explain that? We use a blue agave, which normally you would ferment and distill and make tequila. We use it as a flavor. But it's a plant. Well, it's, I guess, is it from the aloe family? Okay. Yes, yes. I believe it yeah. is, yeah. And there's like a hundred varieties yeah. of agave. Um, I, in our particular case, like I say, we use the blue agave, which is, a lot of people are using it as a, a replacement or a substitute for honey. Mm-hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. It's a low glycemic sweetener, yeah. so. I've, I've cooked with agave, yeah. but I haven't drank with agave. There you go. Here's to agave. Mm. Yes. It's quite I'm, a bit softer. Yeah, yeah, I like it's that. It's a good couple's drink. It's great with a cigar. It's uh, hot teas and coffees to rub margaritas. <laughs> we do a lot of cocktails yeah, with that. That's very nice. Yes. I'm going to take one more little sip. <laughs> I like that. We may have to put wheels under that chair. Yeah. <laughs> and water. And that's a flight. That. Boy, yeah, I like, like each here one. Is basically the same amount of alcohol as a single cocktail. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't realize that everything is proportioned in the liquor business. And, uh, you know, you get a one ounce pour of wine, you get a quarter ounce pour of uh, spirits here. So, yeah. Every one I liked. So, they're which one do I like best? I, I all like very, this. Very, very unique in yeah. flavor. Yeah. And some of them you might like, and some of them you mm -hmm. won't like. And some people are like, well, what if I don't like anything? I'm okay with that. Bye. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it's, yeah. we make it for your enjoyment. You have thousands of choices. Yes. Yeah. You have thousands of wines to choose from, beers, and like, and spirits. So. Mm -hmm. No. I think that this one has won my top place, though. We saw a lot of agave. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Okay. Let's see. I think now we ought to find out how this is made. We can do that. We can do that. Let's go find out we'll how find it's made. Find the distiller. We'll find a distiller. <laughs> Here, distiller. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, is this is this from Willy Wonka? Could be. What is it? I always say special order from the Walmart. Yeah. 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 Tell no, me, that's why, you know, my wife says my Tonka toys just keep getting bigger. <laughs> so tell me what happens in this room. I do. This is where we make the magic. Okay. You know, it's kind of like an artist. You give them a paint and a canvas, and then what do you do with it? You know, you hand me sugar cane and then uh, see what we can do with it. So I bring in the sugar cane, and on this side here, we're going to ferment, just like you would beer or wine. It is, uh, we dilute it with water, we add our yeast and nutrients, and we set it free. And basically, I have my play toys too, you know. I don't, let, don't let me mislead you. I, I do a little fair amount of whiskey and brandy too. Ah. Uh, I try to focus on rum. It's kind of my, uh, my background is to try to do one thing, try to do it right. Um, but I can, I can make any spirit you desire. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I'm gonna do a good job, but. Uh, <laughs> We did release a seven-year whiskey last year, and it won uh, quite a few awards. So. Excellent. But we let the ladies talk about the awards. I, okay. An award to me is if you like a spirit. If not, yeah. what's an award? Right. Um, that being said, fermentation, it takes about five days, and we end up with about 10% uh, alcohol. Mm. It's, like, it's like a beer or a wine at mm. that point. Mm -hmm. uh, we call it a mash, and then we transfer it to the still which is what we're working on today. And that's from Germany? This is from Germany, Southern uh -huh. Germany, Markdorf. Um, it's an area rich in orchards and vineyards and tradition of distilling. That, uh, so. It's just, I would like that in my front room. It's just beautiful. Yeah, well, <laughs> you notice we put a big picture window here. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It is definitely the uh, talk of the distillery. Yes. But that's where we make it all happen. We boil, we vaporize, we condense, and we create spirit. Uh -huh. And that still is pretty much so versatile that I can make any spirit you desire. 
I mean, I can close off the columns and I'm like a moonshiner. I got a pot still and a condenser, or I can open both columns and I'm creating vodka. Wow. And anything in between. Now, was there something you needed to do? You said that you needed to come. No, I need to check the still every oh, now okay. and then, but okay. yeah. we're okay. And basically what you're looking at here is a semi-automated setup. Wow. Technology-wise, nothing new there, used all over the world by big and small. Uh, it was one of the first craft distilleries in the States, though, to enjoy. Uh, I can pretty much run it by myself. That helps. The distilling is still all manual, though. Huh. I make all the decisions there. So and then once this we're done, doesn't this decide, you decide. Exactly. Great. So once we're done distilling, we have rum at that point. Um, and then I, I basically blend lots together and we age it for like 30 days as a high proof spirit. Mm. At that point I can make mm. all kinds of decisions of what I want to do. Do I want to bottle it? Do I want to redistill it and create vodka? Do I want to do the, uh, the expedited aging and create the dark rum mm -hmm. or the agave rum? Or do I want to put it in barrels and age it? So you're, you're an artist in deciding... Artisan. Artisan. So art to me, and I do a lot of art festivals in Arizona. Oh, so be, people could because I truly make it. And like I said, you know, you get clay and a potter's wheel, and you make pottery. It's it's the artist that that makes it happen. So you're a sugar caneist. Yeah. Yes. A rum man. <laughs> yeah, that's yes. great. So going out to those festivals, that must be kind of fun too. You know, I've been doing that type of stuff since I was a wee little thing, uh, and I love people, so yes. to me it's a natural. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, being the owner, it's kind of a little bit special for them. It's like being the artist. Yes, uh, yes. You know, well, I, I, You're the artist. So, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it does have a personal touch, and people yeah. really like that. Yes. And it tends to bring in a lot of, in fact, I want to do this in other states, but it's very difficult with our license. Oh, uh, yeah. When you cross the state line, it's, you're the not licensed gets anymore. Involved. So yeah. Yeah. I can actually ship yeah. now to Nevada. So I can ship in Arizona and Nevada now, which is that hopefully going to add some more you know, to our yeah. Yeah. exposure. Right. Because you've got a good piece of art. Why not get it out there? Well, that's <clears throat> for you to decide, not me. Well, I just did. <laughs> so you talked about these barrels. Exactly. Let's I think we should it. go see. That's my, uh, Here we you know, go. that's what I got in this business for. So. To roll out the barrel. Roll, that's uh, right. Uh -huh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Just to give depth, can I go back at the back? John, can I just go to the back sure, to certainly. show the depth of this? Certainly. Wow. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Can I set and up a cotton here. here? So tell me about this room. Well, we do a, this, of course, we do new barrels. And uh, like I said, we're, now we're one of a few, but for a long time we were the only distillery in the country aging rum in new barrels. And uh, be, between that and the microclimate and all of these things, we get a real whiskey type aging in here going on. And all I do in this room is humidify. Mm -hmm. I don't, I love the hot, I love the cold. Mm -hmm. Of course, the heat is expanding the alcohol and pushes it into the wood and then the cold contracts it back out again. I'm exaggerating, but over time, this is what transpires. And the more we turn the alcohol over in the wood, the more we're grabbing compounds out of the wood that give you all kinds of flavor profiles. We get uh, cinnamon, vanillas, mm. nutmegs, mm. pepper, um, and of course, the tannins for colors. So they sit here, or do you turn the barrel? I actually just sit them here. Yeah. Because believe it or not, in this small barrel room, there is a difference. You know, if you go to one of the big distillers and you go to a barrel room, some of them are seven stories tall. Oh. And you know that barrel up top doesn't age the same as the one down right, below. Right, right. But even in a small barrel room like this, from the skylights or yeah, the skylights in is different temperatures and different humidities mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everything ages different. Microclimate. And then you have this whole issue about barrels. Even though the barrels are supposedly exactly the same. Mm -hmm. It's like going in the woods and cutting down a white oak tree. You cut down one white oak, it's five years old. You cut down another white oak, and it's 20 years old. They're the same oak, yes, but they're not the same. Yeah, no. Totally different density, porosity. So even two barrels right next to each other do not age the same. Oh. So you, you have to do a little tasting. I was going to say, how do you it's a tough job for that? It's yeah, tough it's job. a tough job being the taster. Yeah. yeah. 
We yeah. do keep a ledger on all the barrels. Yes. And uh, yeah, I don't come out here and taste no. <laughs> all these barrels at once. And they're all numbered. I would like to. The 10 year spirit will be, I don't even know what we're going to do yet. Yeah. I'm not big on grand openings, but I am big on making 10 years in the liquor business. Yes. Yes. So. Yes. <laughs> Especially as a craft distillery. So I come out here, this is what I got in the business for. I always call these my babies. Yes. Uh, people always ask me what my favorite spirit is. Yes. The agave rum is my biggest seller. No, but these are my babies. Yes, got it, got it. So these are my favorites. Wow, I've never been to a distillery, so you've enlightened me a great deal. I thank you all oh, very oh, much I for thinking you. of us. I think you've got something in your side yard. Uh, we could take you out there and show you a oh, little. Oh, would you? Yeah, our new addition. Your new addition, your new you baby. You know, everybody blames me for this. Yes, it well, is your we fault. We blame my wife for this. Oh, others. okay, Sorry. yeah, yeah. So we'll go take a look at that. I wonder what's out there. We're going to follow us and see. Hey, lead on. Okay, we'll go back up. Here's our little what? new addition to the family. It's beautiful. Can you believe this? <laughs> no. It's uh, oh. She's a 1918 Pullman. She's car number 30, ATSF. Uh, she was a director's car for 30 years. Uh, she has quite a little pedigree. Some, some history there. Yeah. Imagine what's discussed at these tables. in Cherryville, Kansas, which is an old Harvey town. Yeah. And brought her here, and this has been her new home for about two and a half years now. Wow. And you said, mentioned the Harvey Town. Some people don't know what that is. Well, the Harvey, they had the Harvey houses, right? With the Harvey girls, and they, they were nice stop layovers for people on the on the trains. Mm -hmm. So and there were hotels with really was, good food. It was and very nice reliable. It could. It was something everybody could count on. Right. And nice girls. I mean. Well, yeah. Yeah. Not, Usually. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in fact, there's several Harvey houses that are still. Standing structures that we I can visit. I believe even in Arizona here, I'm not 100% sure. Is it Holbrook or Winslow or? We'll uh, double check. But I, yeah, I know uh, there's one in beautiful downtown Barstow in California. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Great. Well, so she actually did a more. stint as a camera car too. Ah. Um, in the 60s, before computers really took over, yeah. they had a camera mounted on the front, and they would push her down the tracks, and uh, create a simulator for training engineers. Ah. And she actually did a stint for quite a while between uh, Williams and, Fla and uh, the Grand Canyon. Wow. And now, how did you get her from Kansas? A lot of cranes, flat rail car, a few semis, and a low boy, a few forklifts. Oh, my. Yeah. Wow. That's the entertaining part. Yeah, that was but at least $500. Buying her is easy. At least $500, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, it was well, well worth it. And you've been working on restoring it. Uh, for the last two and a half years, yes. Oh. And we're now ready to open a little sandwich shop and events. Perfect. Uh, and we're going to handle events, 20 people and under, so anniversary parties, mm -hmm. uh, small weddings, mm -hmm. uh, business meetings, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, of course, she... She has her. Own, she tells her own story. Yes. Yes. Even without me, my lips moving, she tells a story. So. Yeah. I it just. I love the wood. Yeah. It's just gorgeous. Wow. A lot of it. A lot of the train was original. It's one of the reasons we decided to restore her. Yes. Yes. So the radiators and things like that, even though we're not using them anymore, it's all still yeah. there. So you call her her. Do you have an, a pet name for her? Yeah. We're we're gonna we call her the Lost Rail Car Kitchen. Ah. That's but, that's uh, nice, yeah. <laughs> but not like Louise or no. <coughs> well, we blame my wife. So. It's a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's like a good I plan. Said, you know, we blame me for the distillery. We blame her for this. One. Okay. Yeah, we'll see how she feels about that. I, I think she is a real trooper. Oh, yeah. John, I want to thank you and your wife Deborah. I want to thank you all very oh, much for thinking. Of this me. has been a really good experience. I love this wood and the car and the, uh, your flight. Definitely, I'm going to go in and purchase some items. <laughs> and um, 
tell us a little bit about just kind of we've talked about several things let's recap well you know we've been doing this 10 years we draw people from all over the place mm -hmm. uh, Vegas is only about two hours away mm -hmm. Phoenix three and a half mm -hmm. LA four and a half mm -hmm. um, it's a, it's a nice day trip in a sense and now that we're adding the restaurant you can not only stop here for a libation but you can eat and enjoy the ambiance we've created in and outside mm -hmm. um, and, 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 you know, you're, we're off of 66, so we're within convenient distance to the Grand Canyon, yes. the caverns, just driving Route 66, mm -hmm. the old towns, the history, the mining, the railroad, the cars. It's, it's a wonderful thing to uh, enjoy the Kingman area. Of course, we're not in the downtown Kingman, but we're only 10 minutes away, so you can enjoy all of that. We're out by the airport, so we're conveniently mm -hmm. located. Uh, it, we're very easy to get to. You're by the Kingman Airport, and it, it's a, an industrial area. It is. But when the property itself could be, an, as you said, an oasis. Yes. It's just it when you drive so up, you're going to have your concerns, like you made a wrong turn. Yeah. But, but no. when you pull in the driveway, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I found a home. And you open the door, and you say, wow, this is wonderful. I found my my place. That's it. Yeah. Well, you've done a well, Thank a you very, very, very good job. The pleasure Thank meeting you. you all. Pleasure. Thank you. All right.